Hello everyone, this is A.D. Ramsey of DeVita Handcraft Soap. So today's video is going to be a little different. I am just taking you guys along as I make a remake of my Cherry Crush, which you have seen me make at least twice before. So I set the camera up just on GP and it's not... A, heavily edited version of the soap but I still wanted to just set it up so I can have some content on my channel so I have my oils my mold from be scented uh, some neon red and some scarlet red also I'll put a little bit of that and because this fragrance discolors just a wee bit, I'm just going to put it in a scarlet red. So this vivid red, neon red can stay just that color. So I figured I would talk to you guys about some of my travels. Um, I am a traveler. I'm well versed in travels. The only place I haven't been that's on my list to go is Australia. And I was thinking about Japan, but I don't know. If I miss out on that in this lifetime, that's okay. But I definitely, definitely want to go to Australia. I should have went when I was over in the UK. Um, I picked up after working at the hospital for 16 years and decided that I want to change my career and and I did I learned how to cook that's how I became a chef and I did my externship <clears throat> excuse me I did my externship at uh, in the UK in London so I didn't know where I was gonna live or anything like that it's so pretty so I went over there, I gave myself eight days to figure it out. Uh, and if I could figure it out, I would stay. The train system, if you are familiar with the, uh, the tube, it's complicated. But I figured it out because Chicago is my all time favorite place on the planet. I, I People ask me because they know that I am a traveler. Oh, if you could live anywhere, where would you live? And I always say Chicago, Illinois, and people look at me like I'm crazy. I love Chicago. I love everything about it, but it's definitely changing. So I don't know if I would be fast enough to keep up with it. But back in the day, it was similar to New York as far as the boroughs and the neighborhoods and um, parishes, things like that. Parishes, of course, in New Orleans, um, boroughs as in uh, New York. But I just love it. So I should have went to uh, um, Australia while I was over that way. But I didn't. I'm back here in the States. I'm back here in Vegas. This is where I did my first part of my externship um, after graduating from culinary arts in Michigan. In 2014, my cousin had gotten her PhD. I have two cousins, both female actually, who are PhD holders. My cousin, now she's the director at, uh, um, oh, what is the name of the college? Ooh, that's horrible. It's in Georgia, Albany, Albany, A. Benny, as the locals call it. But she wanted to take my aunt to Africa. And this particular aunt, she's both our aunts. Uh, my my father's youngest sister, her mother's youngest sister. And it was on my aunt's bucket list. My aunt is the youngest of eight siblings. 
and it's only her and my uncle who are still living. So she said, hey, do you want to go with me? I'm taking everything to Africa. Do you want to come with? I'm thinking, wait a minute. No, because first off, everything probably has in her mind Simba and uh, it's going to be a bunch of wild animals running around and because most Americans don't understand that Africa has a lot of different countries with inside their continent and they go over there or I shouldn't say I, well most people when I hear them talking about Africa they have a uh, you know uh, UNICEF kind of picture in their mind that people are walking around they're poor and flies are flying on them and it's just a bunch of wild animals over there for you know like a, a updated more glamorous version of Disney World <laughs> nothing could be further from the truth it's very uh, updated and metropolitan areas of course there's rural areas just like in, in any country the countryside or in the backwoods here in the states or in Tennessee down south or out on the plains here on the west coast so I was like she's gonna be so disappointed that she's not gonna see Simba running around somewhere so I don't know if I want to go because it's gonna be a letdown for her I don't think she's gonna get what she's looking for but I said you know it's I, I wouldn't mind going I haven't been to Africa uh, and my cousin who's also well traveled as she's also well traveled so what she did was she booked it the whole trip from our airfare and she and I split the cost for my aunt and of course we knew my aunt would be like oh give us a hard time so what we did was we we said oh you need to pay um I think it was like maybe eleven hundred dollars or something like that and you know you, you can pay it over time and here's the agent and you just give your money to the agent whenever you have it and just have it paid off and X amount of weeks and we're gonna go to Africa she was like okay it made sense to her and she she thought that she was gonna have to pay the uh, rest of the money as we were traveling because not only did we go to Africa we also went to uh, Dubai so we get to Africa the flight was so long longer than what I was used to but 22 hours later we're in Durban and when we get there immediately people who were you know walking past or whatever just having regular conversations whenever they would see my aunt they would automatically start speaking their native tongue and when she would say oh I'm sorry um, I don't understand what you're saying what are you saying sweetie <laughs> They would look at her like, wait a minute, you're an American? What the heck are you doing in Durban? Tourists don't come here. And that was part of the reason why we picked Durban. Um, Steve Harvey had described Durban on one of his shows. And my cousin thought, oh, this will be perfect for us. It won't be too touristy for me. And it'll be just right for my aunt and boy was it so we got there it was beautiful we we hired a, a driver and um when we get when we got to our lodging on the way my cousin looks and she says oh my goodness is that a giraffe and we were just on the main road and i said girl bye i looked over and sure enough not only was it a giraffe it was the whole family in a herd, minding their business, picking, <laughs> picking.
picking leaves off the tree and I was stunned. I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my goodness, it's really wild animals out here. And of course we saw monkeys and we checked in and we stayed in the lodge part of the um, property because um, the hotel was a little further up, which of course we went to dinner a few times, but we really hung out in the lodge so that we could have a more authentic experience. There were more people who were from the continent who were vacationing there who were from Africa and Spain and other international, it was more international where we stayed instead of staying up in the hotel where the tourists were. So we, we, we're shopping, we're having a good time. We're with our tour guide who was well versed. He, like my aunt, was light skinned. And there they call people who are their complexion colored. And I hadn't heard that in years since I was a kid. And I was like, oh, so that's what they think my aunt is from here. Because back then, during apartheid, if you were colored, your parents had to lie and say that you were black and that you weren't colored mixed race because it was illegal for white people and black people to have children even as late as uh, the late 80s. Um, the comedian Trevor Noel is colored. He's from Africa. His mom, uh, if you've ever seen Miss Patricia, he did a whole special about her son Netflix, actually, and it's hilarious. And he's colored. And he was talking about how he was reared and some of the things he was talking about I had experienced while I was there. So um, everyone was really friendly. Like I said, not a lot of tourists. And we did go to <laughs> the safari. Now, you got to think about it. I'm from Michigan. So I'm used to a fair amount of wild animals walking around. I've seen a couple of bears and whatnots in my life. But in my mind, a safari would be like going to a Disney World or land. And, you know, the bear necessity, some animated, you know, or something. I wasn't thinking that we would actually be out in a safari which we were they made us sign papers and i should have known then that was the tip off we signed a bunch of papers they put us in the car and it started getting more and more rural and more and more places that had grass huts and um that's what they made uh their roofing out of was this grass, this tall grass, and it would last for maybe 10 years. And then of course it was free because it was just out in the fields. I said, you mean tell me we're paying for how much to get a new roof, thousands of dollars, and all I had to do was go out here and get some grass, the hell? But we get to the safari, we get into our little um, Jeep, and as we're going into our Jeep, I noticed that our ranger doesn't have a gun. All the other rangers have guns, <laughs> rifles, in fact, not our ranger. So I'm thinking, okay, we get into the Jeep, we start the tour, it's our party. There's another party, a young couple from Britain, I believe. Um, another couple from India, I believe. And a couple from Australia. So we're sitting in there, we're going through, and he's pointing out these different animals that were far away. And I felt comfortable because we were on the same road as all these animals, okay? There wasn't like, okay, here's the road and the, tr the, the trail that we're on 
was dug out and we were either uh, on top of the road or on the bottom and the animals were running around. No, here's the road, here's the animals. Oh, I was terrified. Then we hear this rustling and right maybe a hundred feet from us was not only one, but two rhinos. Real rhinos. What? Uh-uh. Huge. Huge. And I was like, oh, please don't let them turn around. Do you know rhinos can run up to 40 miles per hour as huge as they are? I didn't know that too. So we're driving, we see the rhinos, we see um, war hogs, we see all this. My cousin had the nerve to say, are we gonna see any lions? No, lions are nocturnal. Females hunt, they hunt at night. Oh, do they have any nighttime safaris? What? Who are you think getting ready to come out here at night in this little, rigged up Jimmy thingy and right out here in the nighttime. Not me. Oh, they were so disappointed. Her and the other lady sitting behind us. So then all of a sudden the Jeep stops. It's cold. And the driver turns around and says, everybody shut up. I'm like, what the heck? That's not very friendly. And it's just like being on an airplane when it's turbulence. If the, if the flight attendants aren't being nervous, why should you be nervous? They know what's going on. But if you see them scurrying about, hurrying up and buckling in, then you know it's something going on. Homeboy told us to shut up. Okay, it's something going on. Be quiet. Don't say anything. And, and we were sitting still. And then you see a little rustling off the side of the road. And it was a baby elephant. So cute. It was about the size of a little pony. So adorable. But behind the baby elephant, maybe a couple of clicks behind, was the mother. She walked in between her baby and us. And she side-eyed us the whole way she walked across the road. I thought, that's it. We're dead. This animal's the big, bigger than the rhinos. That's it. It's, it's over for us. And so this dude is panicked, but he's not saying anything. Soon as the mom gets over to the other side with the baby, you hear this huge thump, thump, thump. And the, the, the Jeep start jiggling. I'm like, oh no, it's a herd. Nope, it was the daddy. Hunty, she was the biggest animal that I had seen until I saw him. This mofo was as big as a building in my mind. <laughs> and he let out the big, you know, rawr, with his trunk and everything. And I said, okay, that's it. He's going to ram this little bitty uh, Jeep. We're going to flip over. I'm going to die. Lights out. Cool. You came from the motherland. You're going to die in the motherland. No problem. He went on, as soon as he got one foot off the path, the driver, the ranger, threw the Jeep in reverse. We reversed for about a half a block, it seems, well, kilometers. And then he hurried up and speeded out, and he got on his radio, hey, you know, if you're on trail, whatever, whatever, so-and-so, so-and-so, and then he starts speaking in a different language. I guess not to panic us. Too late, bro. But that was my experience <laughs> and on the safari. I would not recommend it unless you are a true adventurer and you really, 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 really want to see some animals up close. No, thank you. Not my tea. So this is what the soap looks like. And we will come back tomorrow. And I'll show you guys some pictures in between.
All right, so we're here to cut the latest version of Cherry Crush. I can tell right now that the titanium was not mixed all the way and there's soda ash because I do not, like a lot of people, have any rubbing alcohol. So this is what it looks like. This is the end piece and I don't cut the ends off. This one is a huge piece. Surprise, surprise. Uh, once we left Africa, we went to Dubai, which, ooh, cheese and crackers. Uh, I live currently on the West Coast. These bars are too big, even by my standards. Wait, what? Um, so we, we get to Dubai. It was hot. My goodness. And I live in the desert, and it was hot. My, whew, whew, it was super hot. Well, um, living here on the West Coast, coming from the Midwest, I have been around people who were raised, reared, and are used to a certain standard of living. Dubai made Las Vegas look like we were straight up poverty stricken living in public housing my goodness the amount of wealth is ridiculous it's just it's absolutely nuts and if um i know this is not pc but i'm gonna say it anywho if women in this country were treated the way women in their country are treated then i think they might um give up a couple of their civil liberties, if you will, because those women, you, you definitely couldn't wear whatever you wanted to wear. We um, all wore something over our heads, even though some parts of the city is not required, but we didn't know what part was which, so we all um, wore something over our head. In fact, we, um, because we, didn't know what was what. We went with our own traditional headdresses that um, African and African American um, women or women of African descent. I should say that because that also includes white women as well. We have our own headdress, and so we wore that um, as respect to being in someone else's country and not knowing the culture. We had a good time. Ooh. Now, we had a good time and we played above board. Now, I'm sure just like anywhere else in the world, but in particular, anywhere else in the world where it's very male dominated um, outwardly, um, I'm sure that the deviance there was probably off the chart. But just um, like here in Vegas, people, um, they really don't know just how dark Vegas can be and just how light it can be as, at the, all at the same time. It's a very interesting bubble to live here um, in Vegas. So we uh, left Dubai. Uh, we flew back to my cousin and my aunt, they flew straight home. Um, well, we came back to the States. We landed in DC. We uh, went our separate ways from there. But it was definitely a must see. I had a wonderful time. I definitely would love to go back. Um, yeah, and that's about it. So this is, I'm just cutting, but these are what the bars look like. And um, maybe next time I will share some stories about when I went to, uh, when I went to Ireland. Lord have mercy on um, all of our souls. But I had a good time there as well. 
All right, so you all have a great day. Thank you for listening to me yammer, yammer on. If you are interested in this type of shenanigans, please consider subscribing to my channel. Have a good day. Bye.